Hi, everybody, and welcome to Pack at the Track. I'm Dan Illman, along with Harvey Pack. It's Whitney weekend at Saratoga. Harvey, a lot of big names have won the Whitney. You've got Kelso, Dr. Fager, Tom Fool, War Admiral, but perhaps the Whitney, best known for the horse that didn't win it, Secretariat upset by the giant killer, Alan Jerkins, and Onion. That was an exciting day. It really was. I don't know if we, we were happy by things like that. Nobody likes to see a horse like Secretariat beaten. But you knew if he was going to be beaten, it would be Alan who would do it, and he did. Yeah, Alan Jerkins, of course, now the King's Bishop, renamed after the late great Alan Jerkins, that grade one race for three-year-old sprinters a little bit later on this summer. So not only do we have the Whitney and the Test on Saturday, big two-year-old races as well, your usual hoopla and great betting races at the Spa, but we've also got the Saratoga yearling sales. A lot of money is going to be thrown around early next week. Rich man's bingo. <laughs> Everybody who's up at Saratoga should go to that. It's great fun. You'll see people bidding. Some are like you. They just want to get a horse and get in the game, and they've been around all week, and they've marked a horse. I'll go to 50 on this, and they're shaking like a leaf, and they're the last bidder at 50. And then the place stops, and the auctioneer begins. Look at that horse, hip number, whatever it is. It's buy a derby winner. Off a derby. They make up all these ridiculous things. Two, two years from now, or a year from now, this horse is going to win the Derby, and you're going to be watching. And you let it go at 50? <laughs> Ten minutes later, the same guy gets the horse for 85, and it never wins anyway. Well, that, that, that would be a major problem, but that's not even your best uh, sales story. I mean, the one, the one that you sent me via email earlier this week, you got to tell the folks. Well, it's a, really a strange story. There was this guy, I'm going to fake the names. Yeah. There was this guy named, who was the head of a major real estate firm, his first name was Leon. He even owned a derby winner. And he, the guy who worked at his place, had a lot of employees, was a big horse player. And he loved when Leon took him to the track and he got to sit in the trustees' room. So he would go in every Thursday and say, uh, Leon, are we on for Saturday? <laughs> so he went in this Thursday and he said, and Leon was very gruff. Leon, are we on for Thursday? No, you idiot. I'm going to Keeneland. So he was very upset. He said, oh, are you going to buy something? No, I'm selling. So the guy left the room. He had to go to the track himself and said, regular club hat. Very upset about it. But my morning when he got to work, he went right into Leon's office. He said, let bring Leon a million two. <laughs> wow. Who bought it? I did, you moron. <laughs> he said, you bought it back? Well, the two guys who were bidding for it were real wise guys. You think I was going to let them take my horse? I have it now. <laughs> A million two had to pay the commission on it. And, it. and he walks away from him. The horse, this is the truth, broke its maiden as a four-year-old at Suffolk Downs. <laughs> it's a tough game to be sure. Now, what about the thoroughbred named Harvey Pack? That horse had a pedigree. Yes, he had a pedigree that would have brought a lot of money at the sales. He was trained by D. Wayne. He ran a couple of times in New York. And finally, when I'm out visiting my parents, I think, on the Jersey Shore, it rained, and he won in the mud. I wasn't there. <laughs> then they shipped him to Australia because with his pedigree, he was a good stud bet. And there he was gone. I did get a few postcards from fans who pointed out that some of his progeny did win. But that was the last I heard of him. He ran like I thought he would. I always dreamed it would say, Harvey Pack favored in the Derby, <laughs> but it never happened. For more stories from Harvey, check out his book, May the Horse Be With You, Pack at the Track on DRF.com. Okay, now the part of Pack at the Track that the fans dread, the handicapping portion. Where should we begin this week? Well, it really doesn't matter where we begin. <laughs> it doesn't matter where we're going to fail we're gonna end up. We're going to end up in the poorhouse. Well, the, well, last week wasn't really your fault. It was the horse's fault. They didn't obey. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll, we'll de definitely try again. Now, the ninth race is the Whitney, and that'll begin our double. But because it's the more important race, we'll begin with the tenth, the De La Rose, a grass race. It's a, a restricted stake for a mile. Let's try that one first. 
I think Shug's got a good one in the number seven on leave. I was really a big fan of what she did last year as a three-year-old filly. She won the Sands Point at a mile and an eighth. And this year, I think Shug's taken it kind of slow with her two starts, a nice effort last time out. This horse is a really versatile running style. The favorite in the race, I'm not a big fan of. Sassy little Lila, the number two. She's run hard in her last two races. She was run down by an extremely classy horse named Antino, who came back and ran a big race in the Diana. But I just wonder if maybe she's due for a regression off two hard races to kick off her campaign. Uh, I like the way Shug's campaign, the seven on leave. I'm going to, I'm going to use her and, you know, I'm not, I'm going to try to beat sassy little Lila, the favorite with on leave. Is that, is that going to be a win bet or the beginning of your double? That's going to be either the beginning or the end of my double. <laughs> okay. I, I have to, I'm going to give you bad news. I looked before we started this. I liked her too. <laughs> so you can really forget it. It's got a double whammy. Okay, we have that loser. Now we'll begin the double. That's not going to win anyway because we're going to lose the next. We'll begin with the Whitney. Uh, the Whitney's not a bad field. It really isn't. It seems the more money we put up at Naira, the less horses we get. This time we do have seven at the moment. We have seven at the moment. One of them's a rabbit, Cautious Giant, the number three, and he's in here to hurt the number six gun runner. I'm not sure he's going to be able to hurt the number six gun runner, who's, who's pretty darn good. He's earned almost $5 million in his career, and most folks believe that behind Arrogate, he's the, he's the best horse in the country right now. Uh, at a mile and an eighth, I think he has an edge over uh, his biggest competition, and that's Travers winner, Keen Ice, who won the Suburban at a mile and a quarter. If the Whitney was at a mile and a quarter, or I would favor Keen Ice. It is not. I hate to chalk out. I'll go Gun Runner. Uh, I can't blame you on that one, but Keen Ice would be a great one to win because it would be nice to see another horse come on the grounds and do well. Keen Ice was awfully good last year here. Might be good this year. Certainly. I mean, a Travers winner, and again, he won the Suburban last time out, and his form's a little bit dirtied up, Harvey. We talked about it before the Suburban. I mean, when Todd first got him, he ran him in an optional claiming race off the long layoff. It was just a prep. He caught a speed-favoring track at a distance way short. They ran him in the Breeders' Cup Classic. He had no chance in that race. The Harlan's Holiday, that's the race. If you look at it from a speed figure standpoint, it doesn't look like great shakes. He just had a miserable trip in there. Wide, chasing a slow pace. That's not how he wants to run, and then he was dirtied up by running in races where he couldn't win, the Pegasus and the Dubai World Cup. He is a sneaky horse the second part of this year to make some money. To me, he's more of a jockey club, gold cup type of horse than the Whitney, but if you give this horse some pace, and you do have a rabbit in here to soften up Gunrunner, Key Nice wouldn't be a surprise. I mean, he did beat a triple crown winner right here at Saratoga. He sure did, and one of the great upsets, and you know, it was a good race, and he's eligible for non-winners of, of a race other than Maiden or Claiming before he won the Travers. It was a big upset. However, it's over. You are right. I'm inclined to agree with you, but it's very chalky. It's very chalky, unfortunately, but I guess what has they say, better short price than long face. And I have a feeling I'll have a long face next week, but Harvey's always going to turn that frown upside down with some more great stories right here on Pack of the Track. We'll see you next well, week. If they follow that double, good luck to them. <laughs> good luck.